Welcome back to Technique Wad. Today we're doing five side bend variations for stronger abs and obliques. Okay, for a long time now, we'll say 10 years or so, the, the anti-movement craze kind of took over the functional fitness world, and, and for good reason. There's a lot of very good points to be made about um, not moving in the presence of potential change, which is stability, and using anti-movement exercises to have a stronger, more stable, more functional core. That said, it doesn't mean we need to completely throw the baby out with the bathwater and not do any um, types of movement with our core or our torso. Uh, everything from you know, hanging strict leg raises, which would be active flexion, which would not be stability, that'd be a strengthening movement. There's a concentric and eccentric phase to that movement. Uh, to the side bend variations that I'm going to cover today, it's still good to have them as a part of your repertoire because they're cool. Okay, starting with the first one, the most basic, out of all these side bend variations, they just say classic side bend. Hold a kettlebell, stand nice and tall, one kettlebell, only in one arm. You don't need one in each arm, that's kind of silly. And just reach down as far as you can, come back up. Some people like to try and go lift it up by bending the opposite way. I tend not to do that, but you're welcome to try it. I kind of just drag it down my leg, and then come back up, keep my rib down as best I can where I'm not flaring my ribs at the top. When you do that, you feel a nice stretch in your obliques on the opposite side, and then you can really try and contract those muscles to pull you back up to normal. Uh, if I was doing just a, a one-arm farmer's walk as an example, where I was just holding the kettlebell, or I was just holding and walking, or just standing or whatever I'm doing, the kettlebell wants to pull me down to the side, but I'm not letting it. I'm not moving in the presence of potential change. I'm being very stable with my spine right now. It wants to move, but I'm not letting it move because I'm keeping contracted on the opposite side isometrically. So doing, the, doing side bends where it's not purely isometric, I'm getting an eccentric on the way down and a concentric on the way up. You're gonna get more of a growth response to those types of movements versus purely isometric. So if you're someone who's very thin and you're trying to put on weight and you want to thicken your torso, a lot of people don't want to thicken their torso, that's okay too. Um, if you're a bodybuilder, you want to keep a very small waist. Uh, if you are just someone who's just already has a very short torso and it kind of already looks thick and you don't want to make it any bigger and you don't have any, you know, power lifting, squat bench, deadlift, or strong man, or whatever it is, uh, performance requirements that require you to have a bigger, stronger, thicker torso. Um, you know, MMA, wrestling, things like that, where you want to be as strong as possible on every part of your body. Um, then if you're that person, then you don't care about how big your torso gets, then you can do these movements. If you don't want to grow, then just do the isometric variations. So that's one option. You can just do a regular kettlebell side bend. I'm going to face out just so I can face you. Of course, normally I'd face in grabbing a bar out of the rack. Just for the camera though, you can pick up a bar, have a bar on your back. If you have weight on, if you have plates on, you want to make sure they're collared nice and tight because you don't want the plates to slide off as you bend to the side. Bend here. Been there. I've seen a lot of weightlifters do that. I've seen a lot of Chinese weightlifters do that. I haven't done a whole lot of those myself, but, uh, but they feel very similar to uh, using a kettlebell for a side bend, so I like that variation. Play with that. You can also do overhead variations. These I also like. I suppose you could do them with a bar or with dumbbells in your hands or anything else, but you can hold a plate overhead and then keeping your arms nice and locked out, you can bend to the side and bend to the side. It actually feels a lot harder than it looks. So you can play with that. A uh, couple other variations. There's a, a variation I like on the GHD. Where I take my, my top leg, my top leg goes in front. I think that's the more comfortable variation. You could do the other way. Nothing wrong with that, I've done it many times, but this seems to be the most comfortable for me for kind of a pure lateral flexion movement. So I'm here, I go down as far as I am comfortable with, and then come up. And of course, if you want, you could put some weight in your bottom hand, or hook a kettlebell where it's hanging off your elbow. Whew. That's a great variation. And then also, right here, If you want to start like in a normal side plank position, you can just go down and tap your hip and then lift up. You can put weight on your hip if you want to, just put a dumbbell or a plate or whatever you want. Then if you want more range of motion, 
you can post on your hand. And I actually think it's a little more comfortable just for kind of front, you know, forward and back stability's sake to have my feet go like this where I'm, they're not stacked on top of each other or I'm worrying about this side to side. And so starting like this, coming down as low as you can, I kind of shrug my shoulder. And then when I go up, I really push down hard with my shoulder. So I'm getting a long range of motion, getting a big stretch at the bottom right here, and then contracting everything on the way up. And then after you get more comfortable, then you can go ahead and stack your feet together. Just like that. So again, as someone who does a lot of jiu-jitsu, wrestled my whole life, been MMA, et cetera, you know, being very good on the ground in a variety of positions where, you know, if someone's in front of me and I need to stand up, I might end up in a position where I need to be a very strong posting on an arm, posting on a leg, where I can push away, stand up, and then go back to fighting. So that's five cool variations of side bends. I actually like the last one where I was posting on the ground uh, the best because I, I feel like it's the most comfortable. It's a very, very easy to set up. Um, and for someone who spends a lot of time actually on the ground, I feel like it's very applicable to me. So I tend to do that, do that one the most. Uh, it's easy to do in a Metcon. It's easy to do as assistance work. I tend to do higher repetitions with movements like that, whether even if I put some weight on my hip, I still tend to be doing you know, sets of at least like eight to 20. Uh, a lot of times I'll just, I'll just say I'm just gonna do a total of 50 or a total of 70 or whatever it is uh, and just accumulate reps. So that, that's a very good option, but they tend to be higher reps. Of course, you're not going to be doing a one rep max on your you know, side plank repetitions. It's ridiculous to do that. <laughs> you can though. If you, if you do that, make sure to tag me. I would love to see it. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm Doug Larson. You can follow me on Instagram at Douglas E. Larson. Of course, everything Shrug Collective. You can go to shrugcollective.com to see everything that we're doing. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, etc. Uh, we also have the program Vault, which all of our training programs, all 12 of them at the moment, are a part of one membership site. So for one monthly price, you have access to 12 different programs. So if you want to check that out, you can go to shrug, shruggedcollective.com backslash vault. I'll see you another day. Shrug listeners, welcome to the Shrugged Collective Program Vault. Over the last six years, we've been leading the charge in online strength and conditioning programming and coaching. And for the first time in the history of the Shrug Collective, we're combining our 11 best-selling long-term and short-term accessory programs into one membership site called the Program Vault. From Olympic weightlifting to strongman, leaning out, nutrition, you name it, our 11 best-selling programs are yours for $47 a month. Get to shruggedcollective.com backslash vault you will find immediate access to our 11 best-selling strength conditioning programs.